they come out what is going on guys we are back another week another episode of birds in the buckets i am your host malik brown got my co-host rashad milligan rashad what's going on bro i'm doing well malik i'm doing well how about yourself man yes sir, I, I yes, sir. we doing good, good. We're doing good. Late night pod, and as always, you know, we, we, you know, had to get it going. And we got us a quality guest tonight. L- last minute. Last minute. I shot the last, the, the buzzer beater, and it, it went in. It went in. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just get it going. We got to, we got to introduce the guest. We got to bring him on in. Listen here, y'all. We got CEO, founder of Optimized Division going on. One of the OGs in the media game right now. And he got a new show, co-host of What's Next, Crush Sports Talk. I mean, yes, he sir. Got a hold, lot on, of hold on, 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 hold on. If you've ever back, watched the news in Metro Atlanta in 80 years, <laughs> and you've seen a news anchor, he's interviewed them before. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can continue. You can continue, Malik. <laughs> hey, 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 he didn't interview Michael Vick. He didn't interview <laughs> Legends, Dominique Wilkins. I mean, come on. What? What, what, what more? He what got more? a wing in Dominique Wilkins' house. It's the Emmanuel Glaze wing in Dom. I've been there. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Emmanuel Glaze. Glaze, what's going on? Hey, man, it's past my bedtime, but for you guys, I can do it. You know, I'm a little older, man. I've been in my hair a little, my hair grayed up already, man. <laughs> I don't use wave cap no more. Ain't no reason for waves no more. We just let it grow out, man. We just let it grow out. Thank you guys, man. I appreciate you. Been knowing you guys, man. I've seen you guys for years, man. I'm glad y'all are still doing this and you know anything. I saw this. I saw Malik with the shot. I was like, uh, I'm a, you know, called the alley oop, and I said, I'm in, man. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Let's do this. And we and we glad you caught it. We glad you caught it. <laughs> Dude, sure, well, let's sure. just let's let's just dive into it. Let's dive into it. So, um. I know we haven't got your thoughts on it yet, Blaze, but, you know, Hawks drafted Jalen Johnson with the 20th pick, then went on and drafted Sharif Cooper in the second round. What are your thoughts on the Hawks draft? They won it to me. You get a Jalen at 20 and a Sharif in the second round, they won it. I think, you know, sometimes people out think they listen to too many people. And I think the greatest thing that Travis has done since he came to Atlanta, he gets the best player. I remember when he first came – and I had a chance when he first came to the house, he got John Collins at 16 or 17. They be like, well, that was all he had available. That was the best player pick. For you to get a Jalen who's a John Collins light, 6'9", do what he do. And forget the stuff at Duke. This is the NBA. It's basketball right now. It's time to play ball. And to get a Sharif Cooper who can do what he does, um, you won. I mean, you, you made the, the bench deeper. You uh you made, you know, I want to say that, John, even though he got the big contract, you, that, was a, that was an insurance for you just in case you couldn't get John. So now you got that. I love the draft, man. You see what they're doing in the summer league. They're connecting right now. I think um, the athleticism of Jalen's going to play well with this team because that's what the Hawks, that's what they built this team around, athleticism. They can run to the hole. They can get to the hole. Now you can go, uh, you can see John and Jalen out at the same time. You can see Sharif and probably Trey out there. You brought back Lou Williams. This is – I'm an Atlanta fan for all my life, so I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. <laughs> but uh, I just want to see how this goes. I really liked it a lot. I, I did. I thought he, Travis was – Travis is – he hasn't – he can't miss. With that Snoop thing in Twitter, um, TikTok, he can't miss. This man can't miss. <laughs> this man can't miss. <laughs> for, for sure, for sure. And also another guy, uh, you know, kind of like the three guys that people are kind of expecting to be in play for the roster. Third guy, Skylar Mays, man. What what have you seen from him in Vegas, and what are you really liking from him so far? Skyler's always been one that we've always kept our eye on. You know, we was we've heard about Skyler for a couple of years now, and we knew he had it. He had some talent. I think he's a good point guard. I've seen some great things on. I think what you're seeing in Vegas, what what they've been wanting. He's had time to mature behind Trey. Lou came back in last year, and I think you're gonna see him still um, climb. I like. I, uh, look, man, y'all guys been around Atlanta long enough. We see so much great with this Hawk team, we're kind of scared right now. Because people in Atlanta are just sitting around like, should we get excited between Skyler, between with these guys in the draft? I, I really like Skyler. He's always been a favorite of mine. Um, I think this may be a year he can add. Um, we're at, this is a deep team this year. Uh, we, 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 he adds that needed depth that we need to, to have. And I, I really like Skyler. I like what he's doing in the summer. 
Yeah, um, it's just it's crazy because I think I I don't know which game I was watching, but um, Renee was basically saying that watching um, I'm, I'm tripping. Sharif and Jalen was like watching Trey and John like the for their first year to get on. So, like it kind of do look like that, like him just throwing them live, like the pass and everything was like dang. But at the same time, it feels like are we really going? Are we going to see these guys this season? Because like you said, the Hawks the Hawks are already deep. Just without them, I mean, you, you got Lou coming back. I mean, you got all these – you got depth now, but you don't know if you're really going to see Sharif and Jalen. You don't know if you really need them unless somebody get hurt or whatnot. So, I mean, what, what do you think about that? I think Jalen's the one we got to watch for. Sharif is going to be hard between Lou and uh, Trey to bring back. When they brought back Lou, I was looking at Sharif being like a, a – you know, being a piece. But uh, we still got to look at – I can't think of his name. That's the age I keep telling y'all, the guy that we got. Who got hurt against the Knicks for us? Um, Hunter. Hunter. Let's see how his injury plays out. That's who I'm ready to see. And then if his don't come, if he not come back strong, you see Jalen playing more towards the beginning and helping out his team. So it's about what Hunter does with his injury. I'm, I'm looking for him. Um, because his injury was kind of scary because he really didn't do anything on the court. But for them to pull him out of the playoffs, Tell me that injury is a little bit serious than everybody thinks. So he might miss the beginning of the season, and we'll see what Jalen does at that time as well. And I think that also helped uh, Collins in his leverage when um, Hunter was hurt because now you're like, okay, you need me here now. So what are y'all going to do with it? And I think that's the one to watch to see what Hunter's going to do. Because Hunter, um, if Hunter plays and comes back strong, then Jalen doesn't get as many minutes as we thought. But if he not, we're going to see Jalen play some this summer, I mean this year, uh, when the fall hit. Did, did uh, John Collins really prove that, that the Hawks needed him when Bobby Portis outplayed him in the Eastern Conference Finals? I was, man, look, I, I'm going to be here now, and I'm noticing a, a popular opinion. I thought John was gone. I thought he was. I didn't see him in the line. I just didn't see it. You know, with Cam here, with Hunter, and then, then you get Jalen, I was like, any, many, many more. Why are we going to pay him all this money when we got to pay Trey all this money? And then these young cats going to come back. They going to want all late. I see a superstar in Cam Reddish. Are we really ready to let him go if we can't pay him because we paid John and the Hawks? You know, I can't question Travis. Travis is a smart man. He's Maybe he sees something I didn't. But I thought John wasn't going to be here, and I was wrong. And, you know, I tell John, I, I'm wrong. But I just didn't see with the numbers game, with Dalinari being here, and all these front court, and Clint still being here, and you bringing Jalen. And um, I thought Knight was going to have a chance to be here, but they moved Knight on. I think John had to read to make Knight move. I thought I like Knight. I liked him. He was six nine. He was six ten. He can move just as well as uh, John. But they moved on from Knight, so I was kind of like, well, maybe, maybe I don't see something. You know, I, you know, I've only been covering them. What three years now, Malik? That's how we've been covering off. We just, you know, yeah, three. I mean, yeah, John only like, been in the league about three years. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So I was like, I didn't see it, but you know, because look, let's be real. Porter took his lunch with a headband on. And that's what was a problem for me. The man had on headband and wristbands. I, I was like, how you gonna let that man come out there and punk you with headband and wristbands? And you let that man beat you up like that. I mean, he beat him. Bobby Porter looked like he played in 75, 76. He ran that time frame. And he went out there and he, he showed out. He got him a new contract and everything because of that. He should thank – John should get some roses and some bottles in his thing because of that, what he did to the, what John, what he did to John. John should already send the man some bottles. Just get some bottles from that dude. Hey, yeah, it, I mean, we talk about it pretty much every episode now this offseason. But, like, John, the thing with me is, like, he had so many chances with – Trey out. You know, Trey was his injured. This year time, you're supposed to be number two. This year time to prove that you're number two without a shot of a doubt. And he only did that in one game without Trey, which was uh, the game in Miami in the regular season. So, it's just if like... If you'd have told me, if you'd have told me, we lose Trey, they lose Giannis, and we get, we lose both games, I'd have told you you was a lie. There's no way we're losing those games without... Yeah, we, lo we know Trey is big, but I got John, I got Clint... I got Bogdanovich. I got all this. They beat us with Bobby Porters and, and the rest of the crew. You know what I'm saying? They beat us. And, I, and that's, that's my thing. Who's number two for this team? Malik probably can pull up some texts and be like, Glaze. Remember, I was like, Malik, who's number two? And Malik was like, I think Bogdanovich. We can't be this. <laughs> yeah. We can't be, I think Bogdanovich. So that was my thing with that. It's like, 
okay, John, you you getting two money now. Can you be that second player that we're looking for in this team? So it's going to be interesting. But uh, that's just my thoughts on it. Yeah, so we know John got his money. We know Trey got his money as well. Two what was it? Two fifteen? Two around around that? Uh, around that round? Two hundred seven. Two hundred seven. One. Two hundred seven. Yeah. Seventy one. If if he don't make All NBA. If he don't make it, cool. So um, yeah. So they said Kevin's next, and I don't really know what. I guess you gotta kind of look at Duncan Robinson from the Heat and kind of judge on what he might get because I think uh, Duncan got what five. Four years, 80. five years, ninety. Yeah, he got eighty like or ninety. Yeah, eighty or ninety. So it looks like get... Travis just trying to sign, try, trying to sign these dudes to, to deals now. Yeah, because if you wait till next year, you ain't gonna be able to afford it. <laughs> <You're> gonna be broke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know y'all opinion on this. Is Kevin worth it with Cam still there? Does Kevin survive if Cam has a great twenty twenty one season? Cam I has feel to prove like, he's healthy first. If yeah, Cam that's, that's, what full that's what I'm about to say. Healthy, <laughs> regardless of what he does on the court. We already know what Cam, all three of us up here know what Cam can do. If Cam can stay healthy, regardless of what he does, ups and downs on the court, we all believe in Cam. So it's like, yep. it, it's just up to the health part. If he, stay, if he stays healthy all season, yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. Herder, we can't afford him, blah, blah, blah. Or the Hawks can't afford him. You can let Herder walk, but you know, until then, keep Herder because Herder has always been that consistent piece. He's never been up and down, too high, too low. He's always been consistent in, in his production, uh, in his just availability. He's always been healthy for the most part in his career. So that that's why I'm holding on to Herder until Cam can prove without a shadow of a doubt he's the superstar at 82 games. And here's the thing too, the reason why I asked that question to you guys, and Malik, I'm sorry to cut, but I was looking for Kevin to step up when Trey went down against Milwaukee, and he didn't. So that's my problem with Kevin. Is he another guy that needs to be following Trey to get his shots off and all that? Because I thought if he was out, I expected him to raise his game up to maybe 15 to 20 a game, which would have helped us tremendously in them two games against Milwaukee. So, you know, I think last year was a breakout year for Herder. Um, you know, it'll be great to have those guys together for a little while because I do – I look at what they – I mean, if we look at what Travis is doing, he came from that Golden State era, and you saw he had a nice three glue guys with Draymond, Clay, and uh, Steph, and he's trying to get that same type of thing with those guys in Atlanta. Um, I think right now they drafted so well over the last three years, four years, it's just – they just got a plethora, and to get Bogdanovich at the rate they got him and get a Gallinari, I think they just – and everybody thought Clinton was done, but Clinton looked great out there this year. I just think it's an embarrassment of riches that could come, you know, come together like it did. And, you know, I, I just want to see what Kevin can do. Can Trey take a break and his team not falter? That's the guy I'm looking for. Who's going to be that guy when Trey may need a break or be it down? You know, because I felt like every time Trey would go out in the playoffs, it was a rat race. We were fighting, trying to get back into the game. And I want to see us not have that that much of a downfall. You know, you look at Milwaukee, um, Middleton and um, Drew, like Drew was amazing this year. I mean, he's got a world championship and a gold medal now. And that's what I'm looking for us. Who's that second and third guy that we can just say, all right, Trey, he's hurt or he's taking a break. We okay because we got these guys going. Yeah, I feel like that conference finals was kind of bad. It was just like, we really didn't know who was that second person. Cause I mean, Kevin really didn't play that good either, if I'm being honest against the Bucks. So you didn't have John really playing well. Bogdanovich was still, I mean, he had got back in the rhythm cause he was bad the Philly series, but you know, he was hurt, but he was still getting back, you know, getting back good. I mean, other than, I mean, Cam had what two, those two good games, but with the whole, the whole thing about you asking, uh, what do you do with Kevin? I, I feel like just like Rashad said, I think you, I mean, you kind of keep him more than you keep more than you want to keep Cam because with Cam, okay, you got maybe what I don't even I don't even remember him playing that well during a regular season this season. So what you betting on those two games against the conference finals this season? Last season, you know, it was cut short because of COVID, but he started playing good around that time. So you give him what he had, what about maybe five, five to ten good games, solid games, maybe. 
And then, I mean, what 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 else do you can you look for? I mean, if I'm if I'm going back, I feel like in Duke he was more like a spot up shooter because you had RJ and Zion. I mean, he was still you know supposed to be one of the top players, but but it was based off of high school and he what he was doing in high school. What I see in his high his high school highlights and his new highlights, they don't really look the same for me. So I feel like we kind of going off of his high school highlights and it's like bro that was what three four years ago now so when is Calling he going to turn around and fraud? i'm just saying bro look <laughs> i'm just saying bro like malik saying it that ain't that. <laughs> i'm not calling him a fraud i'm just i'm just ready to see him put it together like, dun, I, dun, I just feel like at some point cam reddish is a suspect cam reddish is a suspect wow wow Bro, at some point, at some point, you got to stop making excuses for. I mean, but they're 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 great excuses, but at some point, bro, he got to put it all together, and hopefully, it's this season coming up. So if it, I mean, you know, he were all, they were he was already in trade rumors before the draft and and whatnot. So I mean, we just got to wait and see. Honestly, you know that's why I say it's, it's about twenty twenty one twenty two for him. I mean, it's it's you know he's got a potential through the roof, but he's got Greg Lo- Odin's um health issues you know can he get past the you know can he play a season that's what we need to see can he play a season i mean and look let's be real hunter the same hunter's been hurt a lot since he started so what do you mean we see the potential but are we gonna sit and wait for him i mean you know it's it's i think john's durability got him signed as well you know because john plays outside of the 20 game suspension or whatever that was he plays um he's durable he wanted the most – him and Trey are durable together. They play together. So, it's it, it makes sense. I think, you know, I'm, I'm waiting to see what her to do. Um, I want to see if he's going to be able to do some things that's going to um, keep – I think I want to see a consistent hurdle. I want to see that he can come out there and you can count on 15 to 20 a night or 10. You know, just consistent. Well, you know, he going – if you leave him open, you in trouble. That's what I want him to make people feel that, you know. I think sometimes he try to get too, too much of a sauce game. I don't need white chocolate in Atlanta. I need somebody who can hit them threes. I need, I need for when people leave. White boy summer. Yeah, I don't need no cute. I need you hit. And when people leave, when Trey track all that attention in with that pick and roll, I want y'all to be like, come on. Come on over here. Like, when, you know, you can tell Bogdanovich was hurt because of, the, you know, he was so off during the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Like you were saying with the Philly series and Milwaukee. But. I won't. I call him my. I call him in sync. My three guys: Gallinari, um, Herder, and uh, and uh, Bogdanovich. They're in sync when they, when you know when they hit them three. That's my. That's my white crew. I mean, that's my crew. I love it. They in sync, man. That's my in sync crew. They got they when they hitting when they're playing. Everybody's in trouble. I'm telling you, we are we are hard to beat when in sync is in was in in, in sync. I like that name. That's why I'm calling them in sync. When, when we're in sync. In sync is in sync, so that's how I feel about it. But uh, yeah, man, I just, I just, I love this squad. I love Nate McMillan. I can't wait to see what he do with a post preseason with a whole season now. He got these guys for the whole season on his. I can't wait to see what happens. You know, look, I, I think we can challenge Milwaukee again. I think we can challenge Brooklyn. Is a you know, until they show me that three guys can play together. I, Let's go. After we beat Philly already. Let's go. Hey, I've seen them all. We let's bring them on. So, so do you do you see the Hawks? Maybe what seed do you see them this uh, upcoming season? Because I know you got Brooklyn, you got you got Milwaukee. I mean, who else, who else do you have after that? Was, that could be better than the Hawks. Only other team I see is Philly. Still there. I, I'm still the Joel and Beaters. I. I I ain't gonna lie to you guys. I didn't know how much of a freak he was until we played him. He is, he can shoot. He got inside game. He, he's a lot. Uh, getting rid of Ben Simmons should be interesting for them. So it's gonna be interesting. But I think Brooklyn, Milwaukee, Hawks. I got Hawks in the top three. Um, and I like what Miami did. I like Kyle Lowry down there, man. I like that squad. They're top four. Um, and then, you know, you can, I say Philly down in that five. But, uh, I think the Hawks. You got Philly sliding down from from one to five. 
So 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 who who do you think they get Ben Simmons for? Who do you think they get for Ben Simmons? I think that team is such disarray. Um, they need a, somebody who's a little different for them. Somebody who can can be a leader. I don't know who would. I don't know who would take Ben right now. Ben is a he's a great player, but he's a liability man. He's you shouldn't be. You know what? Ben bothers me because he don't take his craft seriously. I don't want to see you shooting. I don't want to see you shooting threes in the gym by yourself. That don't mean nothing to me. I want to see you, you know what I'm saying? I want to see you balling, man. And 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 everybody can shoot in the gym. I might hit two, three by myself. Ain't nobody guarding me. Shoot. I mean, I, I got a terrible jump shot. But I, I'm looking at Ben, and, and I don't know who can make this team better. Uh, I think Joel makes them tough. I know I, I might be changing my tune when season starts. I might be like, well, they back in there because of Joel and B. But I just see teams kind of saw things when the Hawks beat them. Teams saw some weaknesses with them. And that's what teams are going to now say, they ain't as, you know, they ain't as strong as we want. We see Ben, we can fall off on Ben. We can take Ben. Ben scored four points in the fourth quarter against us. What is that? So people was all that Ben hype, people were like, oh, that hype is over with. Okay, Ben, we know who you are. We don't respect you no more. Um, but I think Miami got better with Lowry. I think you're going to see with Bam and um, with my guy who was uh, Rachel Nichols' boyfriend. I'm sorry. That's just a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> nah, big face, Jimmy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy. Just a joke, Jimmy. But um, I think they're going to bring something. They did some good signings in the offseason. I think we're still better than both of them. Um, Brooklyn will be interested to see a KD on the full season. I still think they're going to have problems because I don't know if Steve Nash is – Phil Jackson enough to handle all those egos. So I don't really trust them. I think we got the best coach out of everybody except for Spolster. So that's going to make a difference as well. So that's something people need to realize. I think Nate with a full season and has a team that he has confidence in and Trey, and Trey has confidence in him as well. So that's going to be interesting to see how that meshes. That's why I got the Hawks in my top three. I wouldn't be surprised if we do like we did in 08 with that team winning 60 games. I can see that and it's, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, people are oh, I, I was shocked this 2015, year. 2015. 2015, we won 60 games. I wouldn't be surprised this year. I mean, we won what? We was 47 and something after the break. We were some ridiculous number. We had the best record after the break once the Nate McMillan got hired on. I wouldn't be surprised to see this team do something like that this year. Well, Malik, anything else from you on, on the Hawks front before we get into the real topic? Oh, <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> all right. So, so now that we got all that jazz out the way, here's the <laughs> real drama in Atlanta basketball right now. The Atlanta dream, which is just the craziest show on earth right now. If you guys aren't paying attention, you need to pay attention to what's going on with the Atlanta dream. Just a little brief recap. This is the injury report. And the injury report tells you just a little bit of what you need to know about the Atlanta dream right now. It says Tiffany Hayes still out with the, with the MCL tear. She was out before the break, and it was like, um, probably about a month. She'll be out for a month. Okay, she was right. out for a couple weeks. Olympic break was a month. She come back. She's still not back. Okay. All right. And then the second person is Kennedy Carter, suspended. Right. Kennedy Carter suspended a couple games before the break, got into a little argument on the bench, said some things in the locker room, allegedly had a fight. Uh, allegedly, that, that report was false by uh, Courtney Williams and uh, just a lot of subtweeting between the veterans. She's still suspended after a month break from the Olympics. That is your third leading scorer. That's supposed to be the future face of your franchise. And then the third one on the injury report. Miss Cheyenne Parker, the team's starting power forward, who just announced at the Olympic break, surprise, I'm pregnant. Randomly. What? Randomly. You what? Yep. We in the middle of this seat. What you doing? So, yep. you man, I, I'm going to let you get it, man. Uh, just, you know, what was going on with the Atlanta Dream? And uh, it, is this fixable at all? This team has really had I, – I, I can't imagine a team going through more than what this team, from Coach Nicky – from it was even before that they had a change in the ownership you know what happened last year with the ownership thing going on and to where they changed some things and now they're on their third coach in less than a, a year 
I'm the third coach, and I like Darius. I'm glad Darius got the job. I wish he'd have got it earlier. But Darius is a good dude. But uh, it's it's the team was built to be around the three guard system. It's supposed to have been Kennedy, um, Tip, and Courtney. That was the team that was it was supposed to be a faster three team, three guard team that's going to be out there challenging. And when those three were together, they were a good team. They played well. Tip got hurt. It was she had the MCL. I think it's MCL strain. Um, Kennedy, um, I don't know enough about Kennedy. And that's the thing I don't know. I've been trying to, I got to give the dream credit. I thought I was on the inside. They've been hush hush about the Kennedy thing. Well, I was, I've been trying, you know, I got some cats be like, yeah, I heard this. I heard that. Like, I ain't heard nothing. I don't know what y'all heard. I got, and I got inside contacts. They be looking at me like, bro, we can't eat. We can't eat. It's like, if they said something about Kennedy, they might get sued. That's how tight they, they like, hey man, we can't, we can't say. All I'm gonna tell you is she ain't here. And I'm like, well, okay, give me something. I've been here for I've been here for a while. So here's the thing that is gonna be interesting. If Tip come back, they're only two games out of eighth place. And if you're the dream, you just want to get in. After a season like this, you just want to get in. The problem is that next two games they play LA and then they play Phoenix again next Saturday. So it's gonna be tough. LA ain't in LA ain't LA because without the uh, without the sisters there. So they got a chance against LA as a back to back and then all that. Um, if Darius can get them to stay, they brought, they signed Candace, um, I forget her name. Dupree. Last they, they, uh, Dupree. It's not like they can win it all, but I can see them maybe scraping a playoff, but it's going to be tough. Um, it, it's, it's, it's going to be tough. Um, and, and I just think it's just been too much movement. Um, uh, I was Cheyenne just, Yes, wow. She played the game before the announcement. That's what got me. That was she crazy. Played, she played the game before the hey, announcement. Hey, and, and the picture on the announcement looked like she was well along, ain't it? Yeah, that's what I'm like. It what did. About yes. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I didn't see that in the jersey. What, what am I? I was like, Malik, you supposed to know this stuff. You was at the game before. What is going on, Malik? Look, it's crazy because I think it was the game before she had announced it. And, you know, we were up with, with the media and everything, and she had walked past us with, I think it was her mom, and I didn't see a thing, bro. Like, she just <laughs> walking, you know, like a normal little bat, like a basketball player, just, I, I was, I ain't see nothing. It was nothing for me to be skeptical about. <laughs> I was like, excuse me? I mean, you know, you out there, and look, the WNBA play, inside play is still inside play with the WNBA. They throw elbows. They, they, them women be kind of scrapping in there. And I'm like, baby, what did they hit you in the stomach? She a power forward, too. So you know she banging in the, <laughs> banging the WNBA a little bit. Them women don't play in the middle. I've seen some – Elizabeth throw some, you like, feel like she want to throw some hands out there sometimes. So this team is going to be the true testament of if they make it to the playoffs, we should all be like – everybody should just go do a game because if they make it to the playoffs, everybody should just go. Because I, I – I'm the, for them to – I looked at the game today, and I thought Phoenix was going to blow them out by 30, but they forced it. That's what's crazy about it. You know, Ari was back home in Phoenix. You know, she's back in Arizona today. Um, she still got ways to go. Her game is still out at the, at the top level. Um, Odyssey, she plays okay. I mean, she still is not – they missing Kennedy a lot. If you had Ken, – Kennedy, I didn't know – you know how they say two players can make it? It's just like, honestly, if Trey and um, – who was I? Saying? We don't hey, have a hey, 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 it goes back to who's number two. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to say, we don't have that number two player. So we we still, I won't say John. I'm like, no, nah, that's not even close to what. Because Kennedy, yeah, Kennedy and Tip are the two, they are big pieces to this. I think if you see this, they are five or six seed, even maybe four or five seed. Without them, it's 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 tough, man. Um, What helped them, though? Olympic break. That was big for them. They needed that time away from the game. And they had no all-stars playing over there. So they basically had the whole squad here the whole time the Olympic break was going on. So that was big for them. So they have, you know, they would, you know, get a chance to jail and get Darius time to get the team together. So it was almost like a new training camp. Uh, but I, I, I can't imagine in my years of watching sports, covering sports, playing sports, I've never seen this much turmoil in a team in my life. And, um, it's going to be interesting, man. I think this road trip, if they can win one or two, um, they have a chance. I think Phoenix is going to be tough to beat because Phoenix just got 
I didn't know how to load it. You know, the crazy thing about Phoenix, five of their players played in the Olympics this year. They had one play for Canada in the year nurse. Um, uh, and then they had one play for Australia. Then they had the, um, the three players for America, USA. They had five players play overseas. Even their coach was the coach of Team Australia. So they had all those Olympians play together on that one team, and they're in fourth seed. So they're tough to beat. So I, I didn't know that till today, the but they had five Olympians on that squad. So it's crazy. And they still won. That's the craziest part. They, they, you know, no breaking. They still beat the <laughs> dream. Coming yeah. Back. But, but yeah. I, it's crazy, man. Go, go ahead, Malik. The crazy, the craziest thing that I, with whole, the whole Kennedy situation is like, it's funny because the dream, I think they posted, because I know Rashad's been talking about it, like, since the break. I know they've been doing, like, events or whatnot, like, the team. I, didn't they have, like, a pool party or something, like, a couple weeks ago? Even there. Yeah, like a pool party, and then I think they were just at a at a uh, uh um what are them yeah, things called? A A B L. Yeah, all right, that, and then they they did something else together. Um, to the brain like an escape room or something. It was a escape yeah. room, and I didn't see Kennedy in any of the pictures. And I was like, dang, bro, I understand you suspended from the game, but you can't even be around the team. You know, like <laughs> like when they do these little events, it's crazy. What I know and what little I know about Kennedy, it was so bad that they realized they feel like she couldn't have been around the team. It's one of those full suspension from the organization suspensions. It's like no facilities, no nothing. So if you look at any of the practice footage they've been putting out there, you won't see her out there at all. She's not in no practice footages. She's not anything. So um, don't be surprised, guy, with only 12 games left. She might not play the rest of this year. It's one of those type of suspensions. Um, Do you see her getting traded? Um, I wouldn't put it out there. It's so much going to be there's so many questions with this team. Um, who's the coach next year? Can somebody connect with her? They still don't have a GM. That's the thing. They, they don't even have a GM. Yeah, I mean, you don't have a GM. You got to get that field. Then you got to get the coach field if there is not your dude. And that guy needs to be able to say, I can work with Kennedy, or we need to go ahead and get all about it and do something and trade for something. I mean, you're going to trade a Kennedy. You better get a, a first – I mean, a top first pick or a real good player to go along with it because, honestly, Kennedy can – she can ball when she wants to. So you better be able to get something for her. But um, it, it's – there are too many things that need to be – and you're right, the GM is a big part, you know. Um, and the coach is – you know, I like Darius a lot. I hope he gets his shot. I hope he has a great run. Um, because we know what he's done, you know, with Joni down in Georgia, it'd be good for him probably to be able to stay and be over the dream. Um, because he's been with his organization now going on three to four years. So, um, but he has to have a good run. He has to be able to show that he can take this turmoil. Um, I was going to cuss on y'all show, but I won't. But uh, he had to take this ish to sugar. And, you know, it's already ish. You got to be able to flip it around and do something. If you have a nice run and somehow you get the eighth seed, I see them giving him a shot. Uh, but it's going to be tough, man. This is – this. I've, I've never seen anything like this. Um, even with the way the, the Falcons – yes, I have. That whole Bobby Petrino bull crap back in – when Vic that, was, that was legendary, though. That was when, <laughs> when Vic went to jail, Petrino left a note in the locker room. Yes, I did see this before. But we got Matt Ryan – wait, let me make sure people don't like the Matt Ryan thing. So what I'm just saying, we got – out of that came something good. I don't care what y'all say, Matt Ryan was the guy, but you were, I'm wrong. That Falcons, when Vic went to jail, Petrino left a – he didn't even tell the team. He left notes in their locker room and bounced, and we got destroyed that year. I mean, it was Chris Redman, that quarterback. That's how bad that team was. That's how bad this seems right now. But this – if Darius is able to turn around, it might be a different story. But that's the only thing I can compare to what's going on with the dream. There is only one player who can save their line of dream right now. She goes by the name of Pistol Page. I can't say the last name on the nickname because she trademarked it. So if I say it, I'll have to pay some money to, yes. to the corporation. Shout out to NIL. Pistol Page Beckers. I'll say Beckers. Yeah. Page Beckers yeah. is the only thing that can save the Atlanta dream right now. And she can't come out for another couple of years. So you got to yeah, wait another couple of years. You might as well be bad. Let whoever be bad. You know, maybe go with, like, I don't even want to go for Drew Lloyd, honestly, because why would you go for Drew Lloyd when you already have Tiffany Hayes? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, I, I just don't get it. So, 
I'm, you know, I'm waiting out on Joel Lloyd and free agency this offseason. I'm not really going for her. Really just kind of just hovering around, staying bad until Paige Beckers can come out. The pages, I, I, a player that I've studied this offseason who's just phenomenal is I haven't seen anybody play like Brianna Stewart in a while. Everywhere she goes, she wins. And uh, for her to, I mean, she's got, she came off an Achilles and just wins trophies. Everywhere she goes, I mean, it's just, and um, from what I've seen from Paige so far, um, you know, it might be something to look at to a couple of years, like, hey, Paige, with the NIL, you know, you need, you know, you need some, need some, need to come to Atlanta and play around. And you got some nice things down here. You got a whole stadium we can name after you, you know, we can name some stuff after you. We got some NIL stuff down here. We got Delta. We got Home Depot. We got a whole bunch of stuff we can throw at you. Coca-Cola. We got all that right here. We can we throw money at you. So just think about it. But she's um it's gonna be interesting. But um I'm I'm waiting to see. Um as much as I and I ain't gonna lie to you guys, that's the one team after all the stuff we've been able to do over the years, that's the team that's near to my heart is the dream, because I've seen what they've been through and some of the things they've been through. Um I hope that they do right by Angel and put her name, her jersey in State Farm because she deserves it. Um, but Tip is a big piece. And um, I think her not being able to, you know, she took last year off. She didn't want to be in the bubble, the wobble. And now she's hurt. So they put a lot of emphasis behind her. And if she can't come back strong, it's going to be pretty tough. I mean, they really thought the team was supposed to be Kennedy, Courtney, and uh, Tip. That was the, they built the team around a three guard system because and when it didn't, it just, they only played three games. If you look at the three games they played together, I think they were four and one or something like that or something crazy like that. Can we just give a shout out to uh, Crystal, I get buckets, Bradford for real, real quick, real quick, because she Mello. look. <laughs> Chris Mello, man. She, <laughs> Chris Mello. She took the ball today, man, and went inside on Brittany Grinder twice. Brittany swatted her stuff. She got the ball back. So, uh-uh. I said, come on, Chris. She went right back in there, man. Crystal, man, she, she tough as they come. She looked like she hungry for that check, man. I can't be that. I mean, Chris Mello, man, that's my girl. She, she, she tougher than nails, man. She living but the dream, and they living the dream. <laughs> she is holding. She don't hold nothing back from nobody, man. So. Uh, that squad, man, is going to be very interesting, man. Like I said, you know, I'm pulling for him. Um, I don't think I would be surprised if Kennedy played this year. I would be. Um, I think they're going to see what they can do when Tip comes back, Candace Dupree coming on, you know, and now, you know, with the bigs of, you know, losing um, our girl Cheyenne to pregnancy, and it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Because the thing about WNBA, they play big ball. And we ain't got a lot of size down there. But Elizabeth, she does her job and all that. But, you know, Monique and um, those, um, they, they can be able to play. But Candace is going to be huge for us. You know, she got to be able to do some big things for us to be able to do something going forward. You got anything else, Dream or shot? Uh, I guess with the Dream, it's just a, just a wish list thing that I'm putting out there. I guess for next year's draft, you don't really need a guard. You didn't really need Eric McDonald. I don't get that pick. I still don't get that pick. Um, I guess now it's kind of like nice insurance now that Kennedy Carter is probably out the window potentially. So it's nice insurance for Kennedy Carter, but you didn't need Aaron McDonald at the time you dropped it there. So now you're looking at next year, and I'm looking at a at a uh, a forward, a front court player. I was about to say a big uh, that that should be there in the middle of the first round. Um, Shakira Austin over there at Ole Miss. So former uh, Maryland player, former All-American, McDonald's All-American coming out of high school, five-star recruit. So, yeah, Shakira Austin, she could play. Is anybody top four? Top four, not not that I know of, because like, I'm thinking first couple picks is going to be Ryan Howard, Melissa Smith. Those are both wings. You don't really need a wing. And then everybody else is kind of just a wash. Like, you know, anybody can go at any spot, so. I know Shakira Austin's going to be there around the five, six spot. So that's why I'm like Shakira Austin. She's a legitimate big. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think this team may, if they don't make the playoffs, they might have a top three. 
a top four pick and is anybody worth is Shakira worth getting a four top three or four um it's gonna be interesting to see do you make that package or deal with Kennedy and go after somebody you know what I'm saying would that be something you do if you got a top three pick and you got a Kennedy that you want to move is somebody out there that you got an eye on that could be coming in and be worth that trade so these um, days it feels like in the league you can't win in the league without one of those hybrids those uh those yeah. big, you know, guards like uh, Candace Parker and uh, um, Elena Deladon, like you can't win without one of those. Uh, Brianna Stewart, as you were just talking about, uh, Asia Wilson, who's not in the same kind of breath because she doesn't like, you know, shoot and all everything like that, like those other uh, forwards do. But someone like that, you need a dominant kind of four who can handle the ball. So there's none of those in this draft. <laughs> I mean, a couple of years ago, the, the move they wanted to make from what I, from my sources, I'm using sources now, uh, they wanted Dewana Bonner. And if you'd have had a Dewana Bonner in Atlanta, that would have been big. That would have been big. Yeah, because Dewana would, would tip. Oh, come on, man. You know, that would have been crazy. But they couldn't get a Connecticut guy. Um, but that was one of the people that was on the list, like you were talking about, Rashad. That's one of those hybrid players who can shoot and take you inside, can play some D. I said, she was one of those. So, I mean, if they can somehow get that or – uh, but, you know, I can't count out Kennedy. Um, she might come back ready to go. I think she, for real, she's, she's, she's a dynamic player when she's ready to play. I don't think too many people can. She can she can handle the ball. She can play D. She's pretty dynamic at that point guard position. So hopefully we can keep her and get her going straight. Uh, that's my that's my hope. Um, this is Kennedy's it's Kennedy City. It's Kennedy City. Yeah, she, I mean, this is, this city and I, I want to just – the city plays off each other. If we had two of the best point guards in both leagues, a Trey and a Kennedy really doing this thing in the city, come on, man. Y'all know how we are around here. We, Hey, if we Atlanta, baby. We front run, baby. We, we run, baby. We, we going to be jersey down. We front runners. We, run. <laughs> we, we be jerseys down. Trey, we have Young and, and you know, Kennedy, Carter, jerseys all over the city, man. Come on. Hey, don't forget Acuna, too. We we got we got some young. Oh my we got all a. <laughs> oh my goodness! Now I don't know about the other squad. I refuse to talk about them for a while. But um, you know, they made me a little upset. But I'm that, that, that's not, not, not the, the Kyle Pitts jerseys. You're not gonna see the number eight. <laughs> okay, he out there in a the hoodie. I'm like, why he ain't playing one down, man? Can we at least see the young cat do? <laughs> and, and, and joking, hey, it, the craziest part, e man, you got. <laughs> Everybody watching, everybody in Metro Atlanta watching on Saturday, they watching the Miami Dolphins game. They like, oh, this is, this is what every person in Metro Atlanta has known about this kid since he's about 16, 17 years old, except for the folks in the front office. How the folks in the front office, the only eight people in Atlanta that didn't know this kid was going to be good in Chicago? How are the only people in Atlanta in the front office, the only people who making the decision? I'm talking about soccer moms from Kennesaw who watched the boy play in high school, knew he was going to be good in the NFL. I coached against him when I coached eighth grade football for Kale. We played Harrison. And I was like, who the heck is this kid? I mean, I've heard about this kid all my life. I mean, look, man, look, I am one of those guys. I, I don't know, man. My head hurts. I'm just, you know, I got some, I got some personal problem with the Falcons because of coverage problems. You know, we've covered every other damn team in the league, but this team has. But anyway, I don't want to get into that. That's personal. But overall, man, I'm going to buy me. A, I'm going I'm to hold out for my cop, my, my pitch jersey. Um, I'm just thinking why he can't play in every other body's team playing. But, you know, everybody else first round pick playing except mine. He got on a hoodie. I mean, did he play any? Did I miss out on anything? Did he play? Look, the starters didn't even play. That's, I'm like, and, and, that's is he the a most confusing thing to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it was like, with me, it was kind of like, okay, you got new coaching staff coming in, yeah. new defense, new offense, and you don't have the starters playing at least two, two, three series. Like, they acting like they got it down packed already. In my thing, Malik, you want those people to feel the stands, right? Show them your first round pick. Show him catching a slant, a little hook. Show them what everybody's talking about so we can be excited. I can't get excited off of A.J. McLaren, who ain't played good since the last championship in Alabama. He was horrible. Everybody happy about Felipe Frank. All Felipe did was run the option. Everything else was horrible. He could, 
no passes. Stop. Look, this is a preseason game. But if you are if you're in marketing, you want to market your product. Play the kid a series to throw him, run routes strictly. I run routes at tight end and split out, throw three passes and say he out. This is what we sold, y'all, Atlanta. You know what Chicago just did this weekend? Showing um Justin playing. How long oh, did he it, play? Did he play the whole like the rest of that? I know he didn't play what first quarter. I think he, he played second and third. He played second, oh, and, second third. and third. I got family in Chicago. They like, thank y'all, Atlanta. I'm like, yo, stop. Then Trevor down there playing their first pick played in some game. I'm like, what is our guy is so special that we can't watch a little bit of him at home? I look, I know it's oh well, you don't want to hurt him in the preseason. If he get hurt in the preseason, we ain't have him anyway. That's just my thing. He I'm just sorry. Put my look, put the guy you have you hear now. Here it is about to be Monday. And what are we hearing? We should have took Justin Fields because he played in the game. If you play the kid, you don't have these problems because we can say, oh, we see it. I don't want to see highlights on WSB. Oh, he caught a nice pass in the white jersey. I want to see when he was out there on the field against a team. That's, you know. But, hey, hey, you know, I'm going to give the brother a chance. I'm going to give Fontenot a chance. That's the brother. He got the GM job. I'm going to give him a chance. Well, who knows? Who knows? Maybe Kyle Pitts catches it, it, it on the reverse and he throws a touchdown pass. And we're like, wow, this this guy is truly generational. The draft scouts were right. He's a generational talent. He's a unicorn. He He's can unicorn. do it all. Like I say, man, it, it's going to be interesting. Um, I, like I say, I thought I'm seeing Trevor Lawrence. I'm seeing all these starting quarterbacks, these quarterbacks. And I'm like, my tight end can play two series in at home to get the home crowd hyped. It's about marketing to me, man. I don't want to hear this all which No, I want to see. He had pads on, so he was ready to go. So we couldn't get a series. Then I, well, you know what? Let me change that. Whatever, the way A.J. McLaren was playing, he wouldn't have hit him no way. So never mind. He, man, that just kind of ended it. So. <laughs> you know what's funny? I was looking at the, uh, I was looking at, do you know they come out with the unofficial depth chart? They didn't even have him as the first tight end. They had Hayden Hurst as the first tight end. I'm like, bro, are you serious, bro? I mean, I understand depth charts nothing to, to be, you know, too too worried about. But I'm like, dang, bro, like, that, that's your first pick. <laughs> like, I, I don't like coaches who – I don't know this coach. Everybody's falling in love with him. Everybody posts about how much he's great. I'm, I'm, we're going to see. But I don't like games. I, I'm on my – I'm on – my favorite team growing up was the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they don't play games, man. It's just – here's what we got, guys. Here's our depth chart. They got – this ain't no – well, we got – no. Here's the team. If they want to move up the depth chart, they need to have great games and all that stuff. But I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm looking at it from marketing perspectives. If you want this fan to shut up, play the guy. Let him see what he can do. Let him catch a pad. But I don't know if A.J. would have hit him, though. A.J. was just – I think you know how they played them games back in the quarterback games. I think he'd have missed the, the bull's eyes. He'd have hit fans in the stands. He'd have missed everything. That boy, that boy. The only thing he got is that wife that Brent Musburger was in love with back when he was in college. That's the only thing he got going for him. That thing was terrible. I mean, did y'all see that? Was I the only one that saw how bad a professional quarterback was playing? <laughs> hey, this is why we can't cover the Falcons. Because you don't know. <laughs> oh, they're going to hate me this year. Oh, they're going to hate me. Oh, oh they're going to hate me this year. You know, I'm a big, you know, I'm just looking at this thing like, this really what we doing? You know what I'm saying? This is. You know, and then we still can't block the guard. We still can't guard. We can't block nobody. I mean, it's just one position that shouldn't have took a break with the offensive line. They needed to play the whole game together, get some reps in. I mean, y'all playing, y'all ain't like a old boy ain't never gave up a sack at left tackle. He, you know, he needed to earn that Matthews. He need, he need to earn his check because he gets – poor Matt Ryan can't – Matt Ryan's guy, he probably going to be old with, like, he going to be shaking all the time. Every time – a train or something go by him, he's going to just stop the car and get out. Like, I can't take it because he's going he gonna to have problems. He's going to shake it and stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I know we was basketball. My bad. No, it, it's, it's no worries. It's no worries. <laughs> Kyle Pitts is generational. Generational blocker, generational catcher, generational tight end, generational athlete. They're going to reverse. They're going to throw the, the reverse pitch to him. He's going to throw touchdown passes. Everything's going to – he's going to lead he the blocked. Falcons. To, he's going to be the first tight end in NFL history to lead his team to an NFL 
to a Super Bowl. He's going to be the first tight end in history to ever do that. Tony Gonzalez, greatest tight end ever. He's never done that. He's never led a team to a championship. Never did that. If he not like Tim Tebow in trouble, though, because Tim Tebow with that crackback was horrible. If t- I mean, Tim didn't touch, dude. I mean, Tim looked like he's Tim, – Tim built like a bodybuilder but blocked like he's a, a Bob the Builder. That's how he blocked. That's what it looked like in that game. So, if he blocked like Tim Tebow, we're in trouble. <laughs> he, Tim's like, ah! He closed his eyes when he went down and he, and he walked up. Did he get him? <laughs> All them muscles and missed all. How you miss a 6'5", 245 pound man on a crackback? You had a crackback, Tim. And he went for his ankle. He, didn't, he went for his Achilles. He didn't go for his ankle or his knees. He went for his Achilles and missed his Achilles. But uh, yeah, that's just neat him right there. Still, still looking like a quarterback out there with the block. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that, that's right. the first thing I thought. I was like, this looks right. like a quarterback trying to block right now. That's what this looks like. <laughs> And it, but he's built like a, you know, he looks different than when he was yeah, last in the league. Yeah, he looked real different. Uh, so it's crazy. But uh, I guess in the league, we, oh, we, we could go to the final segment uh, of uh, the. Oh, oh, go go ahead, go ahead, Emmanuel. So they probably when they in practice, they like who want to go get the tight ends. Everybody on defense, like me, I want Tebow. I want Tebow. <laughs> I want Tebow. No, I can't. Four on ones. Get him. I take Tebow. I got it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tebow, I got my man. You- oh my God. I'm sorry. Go ahead, man. Please, you are <laughs> All right. So our last segment. So our last segment, uh, we like to ask everybody who is on their hawks Mount Rushmore. So um Hold on, hold on. First who, of all, who, first of all, favorite uh, Hawks team. What was your favorite? Oh Hawks yeah, favorite team? Hawks team. And then Baby Hawks team was the, I'm going to preface this in saying, the pre-trade Dominique 93 team. That team was had a chance to win it all because Jordan had just left. Uh, he was out for his first leave, and that team was very good with Kevin Willis, Dominique, um, and Stacey Augman. That was a real good Hawks team. Um, I was going to say 87 because I'm a big Neek fan. So, but I thought that was my favorite. My favorite team was that one because I thought Dominique had a chance to actually win MVP that year. Um, but there was a whole lot of things. When they brought Danny Manning, that was the worst. It was the best of times for me and the worst of times in one season when they traded Dominique because Jordan wasn't there. And I thought we had a chance to really win it in 94 because uh, the only team that would have gave us a shot was the Knicks because the Knicks went to the – I think that was the OJ year, um, the Knicks. But I thought the Hawks had enough that year with Dominique at the ham to really take – we was in first place in the Central when he got traded. So, that's just my thing. So, that was my favorite Hawks team prior to the trade. I thought we had a real shot. Um, uh, but, yeah, that's my that's my favorite team. Cool. And, all right, so who is on your Hawks Mount Rushmore? You got four – you got four players. Who are you taking? This is tough. Um, of course, Dominique. Um, even though it's – um, I know everybody tried to go to Pistol Pete, um, but Dominique, not Pistol Pete, um, what's his name? Can't think of the guy's name. I'll come back to him. But there's Dominique. There's, um, believe it or not, as much crap we get as do, Joe Johnson will be there for me. He's there for me. That's two. Um, um, ooh. Man, it's been some tough times in Atlanta. But um, it's been some tough times in Atlanta. Good Lord. Really, really make you think about it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> um, ooh, shit. Steve, excuse me, guys. Um, I hate to say it because it's been so thing, but Trey would be there now. Um, that's three. And um, I can't think of the guy named Bob Pettit. That'd be my fourth one. So he played in St. Louis, but he did, you know, he's part of the franchise. So Bob Pettit would be my fourth one. I, I know everybody said Trey just started, but Trey, Trey took the city on. I mean, anybody who can come in and say in three years, people are going to stop wearing everybody else's jersey and they're going to be wearing my jersey, that's, that's Rushmore stuff to me. So that, that's how I feel about it. When he did that, he said when he was, he went to a game, and Malik, we always talk about this. Golden State was dead. All you saw was Steph and Clay and 
he said eventually they're going to have our jersey on. If you went to a game this year, it was all young jerseys in there. So he's he's definitely one of my guys. Outside, I'm a big – between Mookie and Steve would be some guys I would think too because they had a nice run against the Jordan run. Mookie, yeah, Blaylock, and Steve uh, Smith, uh, they had some good runs in there. And uh, I know Mookie. Kevin Shortarm Kevin would be there too, Kevin Willis. But other than that, but uh, I'm sorry, Kevin. Kevin, I'm still scared of you, Kevin. I mean, you're still seven foot tall when you want to. The Kimbe got some love too, but those would be my four right now. Cool, cool, cool. All right, I'm going to go with my same four. Um, of course, I got to go with Jeff T. Jeff T. Hawks legend for sure. <laughs> I'm going to go with Jeff. He got a ring. <laughs> he got a ring. <laughs> That's the only reason he and my dog my, my running for He got a ring, Jeff. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going Jeff, Jeff, Joe, um, Neat, and Al. Okay. Same four. Yeah, Jeff. Okay. All right. I have no idea who I picked last week. So, Neek, Dikembe. Okay. Joe. And Trey. I like Al and Neek. Those, I forgot about Al. Give a little to Al. Al was very, he did, he did a lot for the city. So, I like that. That weird team that won 60 games, it was a weird team good team it was just weird because that was really like that not that one he was just a good squad and that that was a big part of that though so we, we looked up the stats last episode and the leading scorer was paul Millsap at 17 points a game no that was crazy about Ka- that Kyle team. Made hey, what, Kyle team had 12? 12 points <laughs> crazy about that team what what t had about 14 13 or 14 yeah t, t-, t- was about 13 14 yeah because yeah, I, I think damari averaged like 11 yeah, Over average twelve. Uh, Al average like fifteen. Millsap averaged seventeen, and like yeah. Teague was fourteen, fifteen. It was a sixty win team without a twenty point score. That's how crazy that team was. <laughs> That's every crazy. night they come out and do something crazy, man. I tell you, man. We were winning games. I'm like, how are we winning? I'm telling you. <laughs> We are in first place. We in the Eastern Conference first place. And they, they weren't just winning. They were winning by like 30, 20. Like they yeah, were blowing. Uh, they was, like they was blowing. They was blowing like it was up. like like Millsap would do a little Euro, get hit in the face at the rim, put it in, and go to the foul line. And you look up, they are by 30 against Toronto. I'm like, Toronto's a good team. Why are they up by 30 right now? Like it made no <laughs> sense at all. Everybody. Hey, look, man. I can talk about them all I want to. I can do some side hate, but Boone Hose is a good coach. I mean, he did some things with this team, and uh, he took the he took the butt out of you know he was about to get fired in Milwaukee. He had to do something this year, and he did. He got the ring now, so he's drinking champagne, and we still out here in pain. But that's all right. So we'll get something one day. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Glaze! Thank you for coming on last minute. Thank you for thank you for taking the oop. We appreciate you as always. Hey man, always. y'all can tell us no man. If anything I can do to help you guys, you know we got some great things coming. Malik, you still with us, Rashad? I definitely want to be able to do some things with you, man. So um, anytime y'all need me, man, just just holler, man. Like, it, it just you guys are the epitome of what what I want to bring and give opportunities to you two guys. So uh, if I ever get a chance and uh, you want to talk trash like this, you want to, you know, you know, I don't bash teams, but I do question some, some decisions. So please let me know. And um, I'll be glad to be here. And I love what you guys are doing. Keep up the great work, guys. Cool, cool, cool. So, uh, yeah. Also, and, and also that, I appreciate that, it, Emmanuel. Oh, yeah, my, my family, I appreciate it, Emmanuel. Like, like you said at the beginning, you say you, you follow us, known us for a long time. Emmanuel knew me when I was in diapers, man. When I was in media diapers, <laughs> I was walk, walking around. I think it was still no, nah, no. Nah, it was Mercedes Benz, but it was like the first year Mercedes Benz. Walking around with my with all my stuff and stuff. They they, they seen me struggling, you know. Always shouted me out. Always helped me. So I appreciate all the support, all the words throughout the years. Hey man, y'all keep doing it, man. Even though you're running, you're running into me with all that equipment, man. Just get out of the way, man. Just... Bro, what? What did you have? Oh, he, he had his team. He had his oh, and everything. Some people <laughs> need each other, all kind of stuff. I'm like, bro, we don't need all that. Bring your camera and your. <laughs>
Let's go, man. Get your phone. We don't need all this for sure. Let's go. He come in, nice suit and tie. Man. I don't know who is this? Who is this young dude? Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> who is this guy? He got his suit on. He all running into people. I'm Rashad from this, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with this organization. I don't care, man. Just calm down. <laughs> Relax, relax. Yeah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, Glaze, drop your socials, drop everything you got going on. Let let everybody know what you got going on because I know you, you hey y'all y'all coming back on the rise now. So yeah, we, we, took a, we took a year off a year and a half, but uh we got a show called What's Next on um, Next Level Sports and Entertainment. It's a cable network. Um you can catch us on direct TV. It comes on Monday at six and Wednesdays at, at Thursday at six thirty. Hold on now, um, we we not just about to uh just about to breathe past that. He said he he dropped that real subtle. He said he said it's you know if you got cable, you might be able to see it on on the right TV. You know, hold on now. <laughs> so, man. So hey, it, it, it's not no YouTube chat. Hey, all due respect to what we got going on at ATL Sports Unlimited. It's not no YouTube channel. He talking about TV. You might have heard yeah, of TV gotta... before. I don't know. You look to yeah. the left, look to the right in the living room. You might just see one right there for you. Yeah, they're gonna be on TV. Put it like this: If you go to your favorite bar and turn on Direct TV, you can catch us on on Direct TV. You know, Direct TV six twenty three for everybody out there. Every Monday at six and every Thursday at six thirty. Um, we also, you know, we, we you know check us out. I'm at Eglaze OTV on Twitter um, and Instagram. And also, man, check out my organization, my nonprofit, man, Optimize the Vision. Um, we use that. Uh, program to take students around the Atlanta area to different sporting events. And like this month, we're going to take them to the MEAC SWAT game. Uh, we took them to Atlanta Dream last month. Central and, and uh, Central and uh, Alcorn. Yeah, can't wait to see that. I'm excited about that. But uh, just keep taking me out, man. And um, like I said, guys, if you know that's what we're doing, Eglaze OTV. But yeah, check out the show, man. And y'all might see one of these knuckleheads on the show soon because we're gonna we're gonna open it up so our guys can come in and do some great things, man. So. Um, let's go, man. That's when you catch it. All right, thank you, guys. YouTube thing. I didn't say nothing about YouTube. That ever shot. I'm, I'm. Hey, ready. he probably, yeah, he's everywhere. He's at Reload. <laughs> Life's everywhere now. He, he, world. He, he global. <laughs> we only in, we only in sixty one million homes now. So that's all. So we just try. Oh, to- yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> we just moved it. Now. We got to do those. That's all. Man, just stop. <laughs> Thank you again, Glaze. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram at underscore Malik ATL. Uh, you know, like, subscribe, follow to Atlanta Sports Unlimited as well. Uh, RashadMilton.com. Uh, subscribe to ATL Sports Unlimited, Road to 2K subs. And you can follow me on Twitter at BrokeMan, the number one. Let's get it. Do you just have a green screen just to have one? I mean, you just walk around with a green screen. Do you walk around? Is that part of your thing now? Hey, I got a green screen. Just green screen. So what? You, is that just your life right now? You just, you just, you just never know. It's like it's like the you, you keep the picnic blankets in the back because you just never know where you're gonna end up at. You know. That's when you know you're ready for everything. You got own. I got my own green screen. I don't need that. <laughs> my own green screen. I don't need Joe. No. All right, y'all. All right. Hey. 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 Hey